Today I've got a really interesting differential equation that I'd like to show you the solution to. And what really makes it interesting is really the solution method that we'll use here. So it seems like along our path towards finding a solution that we further complicate the situation, but while doing that thing that further complicates the situation, we actually simplify it. So the differential equation that we have is x times y prime plus 1 over y prime equals y. And I'd like to first observe that this is a nonlinear differential equation. And recall that when we talk about linear versus nonlinear differential equations, we're talking about how y and its derivatives are built into the differential equation. And the fact that here we've got a 1 over y prime term, well, that's nonlinear in y prime, and that makes this whole thing a nonlinear differential equation. It's also not a separable differential equation, so we can't use the methods of separation of variables. And I guess a bigger remark here is that if you've got a differential equation that's nonlinear and non-separable, well, it's almost always not solvable by analytic methods. So since we're presenting this as a differential equation that can be solved, there must be a trick. But I've already talked about the nice trick that we'll see. Okay, so let's jump into it. So I'm gonna start by maybe clearing the denominator here. So I don't think this is strictly necessary. I think you could probably take a similar path without clearing the denominator, but I think maybe clearing the denominator is a nice way to do it. And that's gonna give you x times y prime squared plus one equals y times y prime. Okay, nice. But now I'd like to observe that if I take the derivative of this y times y prime, well, I'll have to use the product rule. And as I use the product rule, I'll pick up a y prime squared. And then if I take the derivative with respect to x, that is, of this first term, well, I'll also have to use the product rule. And when taking the derivative with respect to x, I'll get a y prime squared. But That'll give me a y prime squared on both sides of the equation, but that'll hopefully like reduce the dependence of this differential equation on y prime squared, thus simplifying the situation. So I hope that motivates properly this first step of taking the derivative of this entire equation with respect to x. Okay, so let's do it. So, like I said before, we'll use the product rule on this first term. So, derivative of x with respect to x is 1. That leaves us y prime quantity squared. And then we'll have plus x times the derivative of y prime squared. But there we have to use the chain rule. So, the squared will bring a 2 down. And then we'll have y prime times the derivative of y prime, which is y double prime. And then, well, the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't have anything there. Now let's take the derivative of this right-hand side. And again, we're going to have to use the product rule. So taking the derivative of the first term will give us another y prime to multiply into the existing y prime, meaning that we have a y prime squared. And then taking the derivative of the second term will give me, let's see, it'll be y times y double prime. But now let's notice that I can cancel this y prime squared term from both sides of the equation. And in fact, the ability to do that was what motivated us to take the derivative of this entire equation in the first place. Okay, good. And now let's see what we've got. We have 2xy prime times y double prime equals y times y double prime. Well, you might say, let's just divide this whole thing by y double prime, and then we'll have a first order differential equation that is fairly easy to solve. 
but in fact, we can only do that if y double prime is not identically equal to the zero function. So let's maybe break this into cases. The first case is when we cannot do that. And then the other case is when we can do that. Okay, so, well, we can't divide both sides by y double prime when it's identically zero. So let's say our first case is y double prime equals zero. Okay, well, if y double prime is equal to zero, well, then y must be a polynomial of degree one. So that's going to tell us that y is equal to ax plus b for some constants a and b. But observe up here that we started with a first order differential equation, so it doesn't make a ton of sense for there to be two like arbitrary constants built into it. Although it is a nonlinear differential equation, so all, all bets that you learned in a differential equation class are off. But that being said, perhaps we should plug this into the original differential equation and see what happens. Well, to be honest, I guess we could plug it into the original differential equation or this version of it. Maybe let's plug it into the original differential equation. First off, before we do that, let's notice that the original differential equation involves y prime. So maybe we'll just recall that y prime will be a in this case. Okay, so let's maybe point out that we are using our original differential equation here, and we'll have x times y prime, which is ax, plus one over y prime, so that's one over a, is equal to y, which is ax plus b. But check it out, that tells us that, well, b is not really free to be anything at all, it must be equal to one over a. So here we have b is equal to one over a, and that gives us a solution that looks like y equals ax plus one over a. So that's the format of our solution in this first case. Okay, great. And you might say, well, could a be equal Equal to zero, but in fact, a cannot be equal to zero here because if a is equal to zero, then notice that y is simply a constant, which means y prime is zero, but that doesn't really make sense in our original differential equation. Okay, great. So we've got uh, our first case taken care of. So now we can move on to our second case. And that second case is simply the case when y double prime is not identically equal to zero. Okay, but if y double prime is not identically equal to zero, then we can simply cancel it from both sides of this equation. So that leaves us a new simpler differential equation. We have 2x times y prime equals y. But now we have a separable differential equation, so we can use separation of variables I'm maybe not going to write it the typical way, but it's the same sort of idea. So I'm going to write this as y prime over y equals 1 over 2 times x. And now I can take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. So luckily, this left-hand side is built really nicely for that via a substitution. That'll give me the natural log of y equals one half times the natural log of x plus a constant. But the natural log function is onto, so I might as well write that constant as the natural log of something, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'll write it as the natural log of a. But observe, that tells us that we have the natural log of y equal to, well, actually, in fact, I'm gonna do one simplifying step in the margin right here, and that is I'm gonna take this one half natural log of x and write it as natural log of x to the half, in other words, natural log of the square root of x. And then next up, I can use logarithm rules to fuse those two logs that are being added into 
a product on the inside. So we have the log of a times the square root of x. But now exponentiating both sides, we have y is equal to a times root x. Okay, now we simply have to check that it works in our original differential equation again. So let's see, if y is equal to a times the square root of x, then y prime is equal to a over two times the square root of x. So that's using, well, simple derivative rules. Okay, so now let's again plug into our original differential equation and see what happens here. Okay, so we'll have x times y prime, but if we multiply y prime by x here, that'll bring the square root back up to the numerator. So we have a times the square root of x over two, and then we have plus one over y prime, but that'll be plus, let's see, it'll be two over a times the square root of x equals y, which is a times the square root of x. Okay, then next up, I think maybe the easiest thing to do is to subtract a over two root x from both sides, but that's gonna turn this into an a over two root x. Okay, and then we have two over a equals a over two, but well, that means a squared is equal to four, but if a squared is equal to four, that means that a is plus or minus two, so we get y equals plus or minus two times the square root of x. And there we have it. That's our, that's our other solution to this differential equation. Okay, so we solved our differential equation, and that's a good place to stop.